I am 20 years old and female. I have issues working standard jobs, so I work as a delivery girl for Uber Eats. Usually, deliveries go quite well, but occasionally, my GPS app will have issues finding the right address and I will get a little lost. I was on my last delivery of the night before going home. I picked up the food from the restaurant at about 6.45 p.m., just as the sun was setting. I put the drop-off address into the GPS and drove to where I thought it was. My GPS led me past two apartment complexes and into a residential neighborhood. I passed one house. As soon as I drive past it, the porch lights came on. That's not too out of the ordinary. Some people have automatic lights. What was odd was that there was a bright red SUV with pink writing on its back window parked just off the side of the house. Essentially, this house ended. There was a tree and some bushes right by the door, and this car was parked just past these bushes. My GPS tells me to keep driving in a very small private road just past this house. This address is, of course, wrong, but I decide to get out and take a look for the address. Maybe it was one of the houses or I could see an address on the apartment buildings. I walk back to the house that had the SUV parked next to it, as this was the nearest house to the one my GPS told me to go to. As soon as I come into view of the house, porch lights come on again, which is odd because I didn't even cross in front of the property this time. The porch lights coming on let me read the address and I realized this was not the place either. I consider going down the alley by the SUV, but something in my gut tells me that's a bad idea. I get back in my car, drive around for five more minutes, then my GPS tries to send me to the same place again. So I decided to stay in my car, but drive by all the houses and try to read the addresses. I drive down the whole road, no match. Then I did something dumb. I decided I would try to read the writing on the back of the SUV. I drive past the house, porch lights come on, and they stay on. I try to read the writing and I can't make anything out. Then I see a face pop out of the bushes next to the SUV. Well, as much of a face as possible, this person is wearing a ski mask. He gets out of the bushes and is wearing all black clothing. He gets out of the bushes, he taps on the window of the SUV, and another person in a ski mask in black clothes come out of the passenger side of the SUV. They both start fast walking towards my car. I notice something shiny and reflective in the hands of the one that was in the bushes. I can't say for sure if it was a knife, and I wasn't going to stick around long enough to find out. I throw my car into reverse and speed out of there. I looked back one time as I drove away. Both men in masks had stopped walking towards me but just stared at my car as I drove off. I called the cops shortly after. They called me back and said they investigated but the SUV was empty and nobody was at the house. They made sure I was safe and called it there. I don't deliver after dark anymore. I met this guy about 8 months ago. My friends introduced him to me, and he became my go-to drug dealer. I'll refer to him as Frank. Frank seemed like your average hippie guy. He was nice and always gave good deals on drugs. We drank together at friends' parties. He seemed like a decent person to me. The day this happened, I had broken up with my boyfriend. My friend knew what had happened and he invited me over for drinks. I was with my cousin, my best friend. We were pretty much attached at the hip so I didn't think to tell him she was coming because people usually expect us both to show up when one of us is invited. Anyway, we drive out of our town for about an hour to the middle of nowhere. Frank's driveway is all dirt and was muddy from days of heavy rain so there was no way our car would make it up. We parked in a white spot besides the road and waited for Frank. And there he was, on his four-wheeler. He seemed to have a puzzled look on his face when he saw my cousin. I didn't really think much of it, I'm a pretty oblivious person. Looking back on it, he obviously wanted me to come alone. 
We both get on the four-wheeler and head up to the top of the hill. Frank had already been drinking. I could smell the liquor on him. We get to his garage and settle in. His garage has a pool table and we would always hang out and smoke. I was trying to drink some whiskey, but sometimes alcohol just doesn't agree with me and I can't drink it. So I'd given up on the idea of getting drunk. I'd brought some weed with my cousin, so I didn't care. I was having a nice time with my friends. Now, Frank is carrying around a half gallon of vodka and it's obvious he's drunk. I guess he noticed we weren't drinking anymore and decided to pull out his backpack. He pulled out a wad of cash, two baggies of molly, and some foil with LSD in it. We're all hippies at heart, so this was something we had done before with Frank. It didn't seem strange, so we all dosed ourselves. I took three hits of acid and only one capsule of molly. I don't know how much Frank or my cousin took. Then, Frank has the idea to go up to his house and see his dog. I love dogs. I have a German Shepherd that's the love of my life. So we walk up about 20 yards up a hill to a small shed-like house. I had never been to his house before, so I was nervous. We walk in and it's only two rooms. The bedroom, living room, and kitchen are all together, and the other room is the bathroom. This sketched me out. I walk over to his dog and start showing it some love. That's when I notice all the paintings on his floor. Most of them were from our mutual friends. So being an artist, I asked Frank if I could add to his floor. He said yes and got the paint for me. I'd been painting for about five minutes when Frank comes out of his tiny bathroom. I looked up and he was acting different. He was looking at the floor as he walked and wouldn't make eye contact. I pick up on body language and seeing him filled me with dread. He gets closer to me and kicks the paint out of my hands. I burst into tears because I knew something was very wrong. That's when my cousin raised up from the bed. Frank walks over, sits on the bed, and starts messing with his bedside table. I thought maybe he was done showing his ass so I was trying to just let him do his thing and I continued to paint. I should have been watching him. He gets up from the bed and reveals a handgun that he had taken from the dresser. My stomach sank. Then, for the first time since he had entered the room, he looks at me. We make eye contact and I could see it. As ridiculous as it sounds, I could see the evil in him. He walks over to me screaming about how he's going to kill me and points the gun at my head. I didn't know what to do. I thought he was going to kill me right there. I was just accepting the fact that I was going to die. I try to start reasoning with him. I tell him that I'm his friend and that he invited me there. This was not working. He still had the gun to my head and his screaming was almost inaudible, but I could make out that he wanted me out of his house or he was going to kill me. I started crying even harder because I knew I couldn't drive because the acid was going to hit soon. Then he walks over to my cousin who, at this point, was standing about five feet from me. He didn't point the gun at her, but he's still angry and sounds crazy. This is where it gets weird. He started losing his balance and it's almost falling down. It was apparent that he was fucked up. My cousin, being a brave bitch, seized the opportunity and took the gun. She's my younger cousin and she's basically my sister. I could see the fear in her eyes as Frank tried to take the gun from her, so I took it. I pointed it straight at his head, the way he had done me. At this point, I was feeling really empowered, but he tried to take the gun away. At this point, he was pathetically trying to hold himself up and swat at me, so I knew that he couldn't take the gun away from me. The fear turned to rage and I beat the shit out of him. I eventually got on top of him and was screaming crazy shit at him. I don't know what was going through my mind, I was just so angry he had even put a gun to my head. I'm a little bigger than Frank so I was able to hold him down. My cousin got her phone out. We didn't have service in the middle of nowhere so she recorded it. I was screaming at him trying to get him to admit to what he had done but he wouldn't. He passes out and we see two ounces of weed laying out and we take it because damn it, we deserved it. I'm not a thief but I was so done. I took his gun because I didn't know how long he would be out. But looking back on it, it wouldn't have made a difference because he has an AK-47 that he loves to show off. 
Me and my cousin start running down the steep, muddy driveway as carefully as we can. About halfway down, my cousin loses her balance and can barely walk. She starts crying because she knows that she didn't take anything that would make her do that. I'm trying to hold her body weight and get us back to safety when I start doing it too. I can't describe it. My legs felt like jello and I literally couldn't walk, so we start sliding on our asses. It was cold and my hands were hurting and covered in mud. I remember getting to the main road and sliding across to the white spot where our car was. After that, I don't remember anything, but I drove an hour to my other friend's house. I never drive under the influence and I'm sorry, but I don't remember even making the decision to drive. The next thing I remember is waking up in the driveway of my friend's house. He had just gotten off work. When he woke me up, I couldn't remember why I was there or what happened. I was really confused by all the mud. I was covered in it and so was the car. That's when he said that I had texted him and told him that Frank tried to kill me. Then I remembered it as clear as day. I don't remember getting in his house or getting cleaned up, but I know I woke up two days later on his couch with my cousin. He sells Xanax, so I assume we took them to calm down. I really don't know, guys. I'm sorry. The day after I woke up, I went to a counseling center here. I didn't have an appointment, but I told them it was an emergency. They told me to get the police involved, but how? I only had that video as evidence, and even that was shitty. Frank wouldn't admit to anything, and it just looked like me fighting a guy. I don't talk to Frank anymore, but none of our mutual friends believe what happened. They still talk and hang out with him. So now, I have no friends because I refuse to risk seeing him again. The acid never kicked in that night, and I'm so thankful it didn't because I don't think I would have made it. Just be safe out there. Yes, drugs are bad, but I trusted this guy. I thought I knew him, but I was wrong. A few years ago, in November of 2013, I was assigned to Fort Jackson. As a New Englander, I was pretty thrilled with the slower pace of life off post in South Carolina. I met super friendly people practically everywhere I went. I missed my motorcycle back home, so I snagged one down there off Craigslist with the intent of shipping it back up north at the end of my temporary duty and trading it in for something bigger and better that I could use for longer rides than my little guy back home, a 1975 Honda 125 cc. I didn't know that I had to take some silly military motorcycle course. This was back during the government shutdown when Jackson canceled all theirs. So my instructor demanded I find a post offering the course and take it on a military installation. Fortunately, I found a course at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, which isn't too far. Maybe two or three hours? I only had a little sedan, but my buddy swapped cars with me for a few days and helped me load the bike on his Toyota Tundra, which wasn't too hard because it was just a little Honda 250. Not wanting to be late, I left for Bragg at some ungodly hour at like maybe three in the morning. My GPS took me through back roads along open fields. The drive was peaceful and the roads were quiet. I was so excited because just the year before I had been searching for jobs back home with my crappy little economy car and no money. After joining the army, I was able to buy a nice car, get a little motorcycle, and go to parts of the country I had never been. If a year before that, you told me that I would be in the Carolinas driving a pickup truck with my motorcycle around 3 a.m., it would have been a huge shock. I felt a great deal of pride and excitement and was a little high on life, corny as that is. It was easy in this big new truck to want to barrel through these long, straight, desolate roads, but I kept it slow and steady so as to not get pulled over. Eventually, I came up behind this beat-up little American car. Maybe it was a Ford Fiesta-like thing. It was purple and had one person in the vehicle, just the driver. He was going very slow, maybe 30 miles per hour, which was painful, but I stayed a safe distance behind him. Since I was in no hurry and had plenty of time, it was nice to drive slow for a while. Then the guy suddenly speeds up to like, maybe 70, which seemed fast for these little roads. Foolishly, I thought that maybe this guy was an old pro and knew where the cops were. I stayed with him, slowing down and speeding up as he did, 
but staying back far enough so my elevated truck lights didn't blind him. Everyone hates when trucks do that. Yes, I know, maybe it seemed creepy. I stuck with this guy at like 4 in the morning in the middle of nowhere, but I guess I didn't think about it. Besides, at the time, I was just 26. A girl with longish, dirty blonde hair who wore makeup and looked completely harmless. Who in their right mind would ever be afraid of me? Eventually, the guy pulled off to the side, and that's when things got weird. And it was largely my fault for assuming everyone in the South was friendly and a heartbeat away from offering up some sweet tea. Maybe he had car troubles and I wanted to check on him to see if he was okay. I rolled down the window, leaned over to the passenger side so he could see how non-threatening I am, and said something like, Morning sir, are you okay? I wanted to check on you and not just leave you here if you're having car trouble. I have a phone if you need AAA. At this point, it's very clear I'm just a youngish, blondish female and probably harmless. And the weirdo goes, I was doing just fine myself until I saw you was following me. You know, in that slow southern drawl. White guy, maybe 50s, heavy, unshaven, but not bearded. Looked unkempt and ugly, but in an old, hills have eyes sort of lumpy, asymmetrical way. Anyway, I felt bad that I may have given him a fright, so I tried to explain that I thought he knew where the cops were, and that's why it seemed like I was following him and that I was sorry. Then I asked him for directions to brag because my GPS wasn't working and I really wasn't sure where I was. At this point, I didn't feel scared or anything because I'm in a huge truck and he's just off to the side in a little car. The guy basically started screaming at me, calling me a whore or something totally strange and I was completely startled. So I said, damn, and for some reason rolled up the window before shifting into drive when he screamed, I ain't letting no goddamn whore swear in front of me. Bitch, I'ma put the fear of God in. I couldn't hear the rest. The window was shutting right at the same time he said God. It was a huge what the fuck moment. Before I could put the truck in drive, his fat ass jumps out and tries to open my passenger door. As I'm shifting into drive, he is pounding on the window with this terrifying look on his face. It took me an extra second because I wasn't used to where the shift was on this car and I paused for a second, stupidly, to look at his face because I almost couldn't believe it. I'll never forget it. Beady eyes and seeding hatred, screaming and spitting on the shut window. It was like a frenzied rage. It was the craziest, angriest face I have ever seen. I floored it out of there so fast, completely freaked out. Sometimes I still dream about the guy. Let's not meet again, crazy inbred angry dude who loves God and hates swears. This happened a few years ago, and I just very recently remembered it. For a little background, I'm a 20-year-old female from Germany. When I was 17, I was in a long-distance relationship and was desperate for some extra cash because I spent most of my pocket money on train tickets to go see my boyfriend, so I put up a babysitting ad on the German equivalent of Craigslist. I soon got a call. Not an hour after putting up the ad, I was greeted by the voice of a man. The conversation started off innocently enough with the man telling me he had an 8-year-old and needed someone to watch him after school as both him and his wife were working full-time. I told him, sure, I could do that. I expected him to ask me about my experience with kids or something to that effect, but instead, he went on to tell me that his son could be a little difficult. I told him I didn't mind and that I'd find a way to deal with it. Would you hit him if he's being naughty? I was very taken aback by this question. I'm very against violence against children. Even spanking is child abuse in my eyes. I told the man that, and that I'd do my best to find a non-violent way to deal with problems. But what if he was hitting you? Would you hit back? I replied with a firm no. At this point, I was starting to feel angry as it dawned on me that it was obviously a common occurrence for the child to be beaten. He kept on throwing scenarios at me and asked me if I would discipline his son in that situation, and that, apparently, his old babysitter frequently spanked him. I eventually told him, as politely as I could, that if a parent chooses to use spanking as a form of punishment, that was their business, but as a babysitter, I had no right to hit a child. 
He was silent for a while. Then, he asked me if I would bathe his son. I honestly don't remember what my exact response was, but it definitely wasn't yes. He went on explaining that his son was supposed to take a bath every Thursday and that he hated taking baths. He wanted to know how I would make him get into the bathtub, and if I would strip him naked. At this point, all the red flags came up. I dodged the question best I could and said something to the effect of things like that are a parent's job, not a babysitter's, and that the parents should make him take his bath in the evening after work. But he kept pressing, asking things such as if I'd wrestle his naked son into the bath or spank his blank butt if he refused. I just kept saying no until he eventually said he'd call me back. I removed my phone number from the ad immediately and told people to contact me via email instead. I also got a new phone number, for reasons unrelated to this unsettling phone call, a few weeks after, so I luckily never heard from him again. I just hope his son, should he actually have one, which I honestly kind of doubt, is okay. I'm a female, currently 22, and this happened back in 2008, when I was 14. Just some backstory. I was living in a small town, out in the middle of nowhere in Australia. It was sometime in December when this happened because I remember it being hot. The main street was about a two minute walk across an empty lot and about another three minutes to the small market which was where I was going on this day. I left my house and walked across the lot no problem. When I got out onto the main street, a white ute turned the corner and slowed down next to me. The guy just kept staring. At the time, I was not the kind to confront people, so I just kept my head down and kept walking until I reached the market. I went into the market and got what I needed. When I left, the ute was parked across from the market, parked near the bank, and the person was sitting in the car, and the truck was idling. It was about 7.30 in the morning, and the bank didn't open until 10. At the time, there was no ATM at the bank, you had to actually go in and get money out, so it's not like he was getting money out. As I started to walk back, the guy tried to talk to me out of his window. He asked several times if I wanted a lift home. I told him no several times. I started to panic since I hadn't yet crossed the road, which means I had to cross in front of his car, and I had to do so in order to get home. There was no other way. I tried to keep my cool and I started walking across the road when he finally said, get in. This felt like a command, not a question, so I started to run, as fast as I could, across the rest of the road and through the lot. I got home and inside before the white ute came speeding around the corner past my house. He didn't see where I went. I couldn't stop crying and I told my parents. They called the police and an officer came but... Since he didn't threaten or physically try to abduct me, there was nothing that could be done. I know this isn't the scariest story, but it was scary to me. I honestly believe if I was dumb enough to get in the car, I wouldn't have been going home.